What do you do when the answer is no? Are you easily going to accept that uh, you can't have your desire? Or would you like to change that? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the new members that are joining on a daily basis. My name is Fazila Bijo, and this is the Inner Work Mastery channel. So in this week's video, I ask the question, what do you do when the answer is no? Or what would you do when the answer is no? I'm going to tell you how you can use revision in terms of your manifestation. Revision is not just about changing the past. Revision is really about making sure that your state of consciousness is not in alignment with the lack consciousness, with what you may be seeing out in your 3D physical world and accepting that as the finality. I'm Fazila Bijo, and this is the Inner Work Mastery, where I break down the teachings of great minds and mystics and teachers like Neville Goddard, Florence Scovel Shin, Joseph Murphy, so that you may be able to understand and practice these teachings in your life. Now, it's one thing in terms of you will undoubtedly learn about manifestation because that is the law of assumption. Your consciousness creates reality. And if you want to become an effective manifester and a creator of your reality, then I promise you, these teachings are going to help you get there. But there's more. As you learn that consciousness creates reality and you learn how to master your inner state, what you are truly doing is unfolding in terms of what Neville Goddard spoke about is the promise. Now, put in simple terms, it's a spiritual awakening. And it's not just a spiritual awakening. It is about the spiritual resurrection of God within. This is why I make the kind of content that I do on this channel. And I help you understand these teachings. Ultimately, we are all to wake up to and unfold in terms of the promise and as humanity levels up and consciousness elevates we can all actually become more deliberate and conscious in terms of our manifestation and how we create the world for ourselves and together next episode do you accept no as an answer are you happy to accept no as an answer if you're not follow me through this video and i'm going to teach you and help you understand that revision is more than just changing the past and how you can be effective as someone who puts revision into daily practice in your life. Make no mistake, this takes practice. You know, anything worth having in life is going to require that you put in your time, your attention, your resources. It's up to you whether uh, it's up to you to what level you do this at, and it's up to you in terms of what you're willing to apply. Personally, if you want to become an effective manifester, you've got to master your inner state, you've got to master your attention, and you need to learn this amazing process around revision. We're going to be talking about the most important thing in terms of what Neville spoke about is the psychological drama. Make no mistake, this life is a play and there are four important members in terms of this play and if you don't know what they are watch the video and actually stay to the end because i'm going to be talking more than just how you apply this i'm doing these case studies from the law and the promise is so that you can see from a practical perspective how to apply the learnings the teachings and see what others have done this week's case study it is about the sale of a piece of land. Now let's take the sale of a piece of land aside. It can be for anything. Watch how this particular student of Neville's, whose initials are FB, is mine, um, they actually have applied the four members of the play. They've employed the different uh, directions and the different functions of the four mighty ones. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. Before I jump into this episode, do you know how to revise? Do you know what revision is? What is your understanding of revision? It's quite key. It's a major, major process that Neville teaches. And he said that if you are to do anything, if, is, if there is only one thing that you would apply and learn in terms of all of his teachings, it would be revision. Now, revision is to rewrite the events of the day. 
a lot of people use it to rewrite the past. It is one of the applications. However, if you were to rewrite your day every day, you would no longer hold on to old consciousness. You would no longer be creating and manifesting from any limiting state of consciousness. And that is the ethos and that is the lifeblood of revision. It's a correction or a cure. The correction is for your day. The cure is for the past. And the cure is for the future as well. Because whatever you change about the past will have an impact in the now and it will go into, it will it will filter into the future. If you had to think about something um, that you were disappointed about in the past and you revised that, you would no longer be creating from that level of consciousness. And what that means then is your future becomes bigger and brighter. Now I have two episodes. One is called the almost illegal practice. I will link that below uh, in the description box. And there is how to understand the almost illegal practice. It has to do with revision. It does go into some detail in terms of revision and I will be making other videos, some that will be a lot shorter so that you can actually understand and grasp revision at a very uh, basic and a simpler level. So what I recommend though is when you want to master something, watch the videos repeatedly, take notes. Each time you listen, each time you go through the teachings, it's going to give you something different. In fact, your consciousness is not the same from when you start a video to when you will have completed it. The first time that you watch something or read something is for information. And then the second time would be for awareness. And then the third time, reflection. Each time that you encounter a piece of information, each time you may read something, each time you may watch a video, you're going to receive something different from it. And so I do encourage you, if you've watched something once, go back and repeat it, especially if it's new to you. What would you do if the answer to what you'd love to have or your desire is no? I'm going to take you through a case study where, we're, where I will provide you with the commentary on things to watch out for and things that you should be applying. So this is a case study of FB. And this person wrote into Neville about how he used the four mighty ones and revision. So FB says, late in July, I wrote to a real estate agent of my desire to sell a piece of land which had been a financial burden to me. Now, when you look at this, he was wanting to sell from a place of lack. And what he gets in return then is a reply via letter the following Tuesday. State agent says to him, sales are at a standstill in the area that the property was uh, in. And that they were forecasting a bleak period of waiting until the first of the year. Now watch what this is, what's unfolding here. The drama that's unfolding is from within FB state of consciousness. He said he had seen the piece of land as a financial burden. And being one of Neville's students, he was quick to change that. And this was the thing he could have actually accepted the no and left it as such and waited for the beginning of the year. So what do you do if you, the answer you receive is no? We turn to the four mighty ones today. Remember, this is all a psychological drama. The whole vast world is a play and your 3D world is the stage. The actual movement and the drama is not taking place outside of you. It has been conceived, dramatized, rehearsed, and completely enacted somewhere else. And that somewhere else is in imagination. So the four most important members in the production of a play are the four mighty ones. You have your producer who brings about the theme, the author who writes the script, the director who keeps the actor true to the script and make sure the vision comes to life. And then you have the actor who plays their part.
So utilizing the four mighty ones, FB goes on to say to Neville that he utilized these four parts in terms of what he wanted to achieve. He makes reference to seed time and harvest in terms of the four mighty ones. And that is something that you can further read up on. So the first part we look to is the producer. And he says to Neville, in my imaginal scene as producer, I suggested the theme, the lot is sold for a profit. He moves away from thinking of financial burden because if you if he were to stay in that thinking and that state of financial burden, this uh, property would not be sold. It would remain a burden. So this is very important. This is what revision does. We move from the old state of the undesirable into what is the new state. But in terms of the new state, you must have a theme. It's very important. The producer within must choose a theme that is the desire. And to the next part is the author. The author rewrites the scene, rewrites exactly what the ending is. And that's what you saw from the theme. It says, the lot is sold for a profit. And he also rewrote it with words indicating that the agent was eager to take his listing. Now, once you rewrite it, you go into imagination and you see the end as done. In our next part, the director. As director now, he rehearses himself and he gives himself the actor, the part to play that was vividly seen in his imagination. Now, as director, he says, I keep, I keep to the vision and then I rehearse myself as actor until that scene in my mind is so vivid and real. He feels the relief that would be his if the burden were really lifted. And what was the burden? That the land was a financial burden on him, but he, in, he now sees that it is sold. Three days later, the agent I had originally written to phoned me saying that he had a deposit for my lot at the price I had specified. And he says, I signed the papers in his office the next day, extended my hand and said, thank you, sir. And the agent replies, it was a pleasure doing business with you. This is exactly the scene that FB had imagined is the lot is sold and the agent saying it's a pleasure doing business with you. So when we look at this particular case study about piece of land, it was five days from when FB had constructed and enacted that imaginal scene. He stayed true because he revised, then he brought the new scene into his imaginal space. What he did was he repeated that imaginal scene over and over again until it took on the tones of reality for him. And it took him five days. In many of the case studies, you will notice that, that Neville's students we're very much diligent about having faith and persisting in their new scenes, in, their, uh, in the reality that they truly desired. And so this is what he says. It became a physical reality and was played word for word, just as I had heard it in my imagination. So it really comes down to how persistent you are as well. It is one thing when you rewrite the scene. It is another when you make it real for yourself. And this is very important. And, I, and I'm highlighting this line by line here. FP says the feeling of relief and joy of the burden being lifted was the one thing that he went back to. He saw in his imaginal scene that the uh, property was sold and the estate agent saying to him, thank you for doing business. It was Thank you. It was a joy doing business with you. When someone says that to you, it means your business is concluded. And so the relief and joy that comes then with having the property sold. But he further goes on to mention that it's not so much from selling the property, but the relief and joy that he felt was following, which is very, very true. It came from incontrovertible proof that his imagined drama worked. It comes from proving the law and testing the law. 
which means that when you mentally falsify the facts of life, what you are seeing outside of you, you become an active creator and not a passive reactor. You could be this person who, when we look at both these scenes here in A, both people are looking at the negative. So if we look at both these memes, I'm sure you've seen them go around. In the first scene, it's the two convicts who are in prison, painting. The one person looks at um, what's in front of him and he sees the prison wall. The other convict is painting what he believes to be out there. In the other scenario, here you have two people on a bus. The one person looks to his uh, right and all he is seeing is dull, dreary and is miserable. The other person is looking to the other side and what he sees is a different scenario. And that's the thing is if we are to continue to look at life the way we've always looked at it, it is only going to give us back the same level of consciousness, the same patterns, the same beliefs. When we mentally falsify the facts, when we go and rewrite in our imagination what it is that we would love to have as opposed to what is showing up in our 3D world, we break that wheel of recurrence. We break that continual cycle of lack, of I do not have, of disappointment, failure, whatever it might be. We can break that cycle and we prevent it from becoming something that is true for us in our future. Now, the only reason that we cannot manifest in the full sense of what we'd love to have is number one, if we're not faithful to our vision or, or we are thinking in terms of lack rather than what we desire. We become more focused on lack or what we don't have rather than our wish fulfilled. Because man is an extraordinary combination of sensing and dreaming. However, if he were to be led by his internal conflicts, if we are to be led by our internal conflicts, we will be creating more of our conflicts than our dreams. And so it is up to us to forever be diligent as to where am I operating from? Where am I? What is my state of consciousness about this? What am I? What are my habitual thoughts? And change those habitual thoughts. So it's not just rewriting the experience. It is also becoming an observer of how you think and what you feel. If you are feeling this is not possible and yet you are longing for something, it is going to be that your your feeling, your strong feeling on the lack is going to win out over what it is that you desire. Where, and it really does come down to you you're testing the law and proving it for yourself. And testing the law means you've got to persist in what it is that uh, you've got to master. Initially, you must practice, practice, practice. And that's what I did. If I felt myself slipping back into old patterns, I would go back and read uh, the particular uh, lectures or the books that uh, Neville spoke about techniques. I watched YouTube videos, pretty much like you may be doing now. So make notes. What are the things that you need in, uh, to remind yourself about? Do you need to put in a reminder in your calendar? That is the level to which you can start to actually make sure that you do not slip back into your old thinking. So that was the four mighty ones are to practice revision and you do this with persistence, but you commit to actually changing this for yourself. You're going to find how amazing and invaluable this tool is. And that's the that's my vision as well. More and more people become aware of this amazing process that we have, which can actually change just about anything that you desire. So please leave your comments below in terms of what was your insight out of this week? What did you learn? What's new for you? Or if there's something that you have a question around, please uh, pop them below. I make an effort to respond to comments uh, some days are a lot busier than others, depending on how the, the video is trending and tracking. I would love for you to share um, this video so that the teachings reach more and more people. And please remember that you are the creator of your reality. It is imagination. It is your I am being of consciousness. 
that creates your reality. Wouldn't it be wise to become that creator and manifesto of your reality using your imagination? My name is Fazila Bijo. Please like, please share, please subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.